Uh, hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. Just wanted to reiterate one more time today that uh, for my patrons, I have uh, collected all those trading updates here and uh, used a hashtag or used a tag here, WMC Trading. Uh, and I've posted 39 posts since May 17th about my trading journey, the $10,000 portfolio, the alternative cryptocurrencies, the 10 to 15 diversified cryptos that I'm going to be trading in this bull run. So uh, for those of you guys uh, who are interested in signing up, you can click on this. Once you uh, once you go to the Patreon page, you can click on this and you can find all my trading posts right there. I mean, guys, it's an interesting time to be in crypto right now. Uh, I've always said, or I mean, maybe not always, but I'm recently saying this more now. Uh, but I've always thought 2023, very, very similar to 2019 in terms of market activity. We haven't really seen, uh, you know, a distinctive bullish uh, trajectory, nor have we seen a bearish trajectory uh, for crypto right now. Uh, While well, this is XRP, I mean, not too much movement since this morning. Let me bring up the total market cap here, guys, uh, just to give you guys a sense of where we're sitting uh, for the entire market. Now, the entire market has come back down a little bit and, uh, you know, that's okay. We're going to see these retracements, as I said, 2023, very similar to 2019 in that respect. We haven't gone down past this low, okay? So if we go under a trillion dollars, 975 to be exact, uh, that means we are technically bearish. But guys, we're still above that at this point in time. We're at about 1.027 trillion dollars in the space. So it's a good opportunity to cost average down. And uh, for my patrons, I've uh, made it a lot easier for you guys. 39 updates if you guys are just joining. And I'm trying to keep it fairly reasonably priced. $5 a month so you guys can stick with me throughout this trading journey. Guys, it's just starting. It's just ramping up. We've got members of the BIS and other financial institutions, heads of banks and policymakers not knowing what to do when it comes to crypto regs. I mean, they're trying their best to, uh, you know, funnel us all into one specific category. But guys, it's really hard for them. And you know why? Because the developers keep innovating and they just can't keep up. Guys, listen to this clip here. A conference from the Bank for International Settlements. Listen to this. Started with an economic function test is because our 38 principles are based upon decades of experience of what can go wrong. We've learned by experience that the cost is excessive in certain areas if you don't regulate. So having justified regulation on the basis of decades of experience, we're saying apply that experience, don't waste it, apply that experience to crypto and regulate it to the same extent and in the same way. But all that leaves us, I think, and my parting thought from this, from this session is we all face a huge challenge going forward in achieving a, a global transition to common uh, approaches to dealing with this. It's going to be really difficult, particularly since it is morphing and changing even as we are regulating. And so many of us have jurisdictions which regulate for a stable pattern of activities, but you're dealing with a dynamic and changing pattern of activities here. At the same time as we are about to publish our, our uh, document on DeFi recommendations, we have to update a document that we published a year ago, just a year ago, on what the DeFi market looks like because it has changed so much even in that year. That's an incredible challenge. Yeah, I mean, if we can keep the crypto market looking like the wild less for as long as possible, I'm not complaining. But you can see these guys are struggling. They're really struggling <laughs> to make these regulations make sense. And uh, it's, it's a big task. I mean, I got to say it's a huge mammoth task because they are trying to do this globally. They haven't done this ever. You know, the, the last time bank regulation has come into play, well, I, I don't even know when the last time was, probably 100 years ago, maybe longer. So a great clip here, courtesy of Real XRP Boy on Twitter, uh, wanted to keep moving. Coinbase is moving to support USDC. So with regards to stable coins, or at least uh, stable coin adoption in the United States, we are seeing more crypto related companies, in this case, Coinbase, uh, moving to shore up USDC by taking an equity stake in circle. This shows how important interest income from the stablecoin is to the company's bottom line. So, you know, we're going to see pushes like this in the US to back certain stablecoins. Uh, they really want to paint the winners and losers very, very distinctly. Uh, I recently had a question from one of my patrons about stablecoins and, uh, you know, what stablecoin's good, which one isn't. USDC generally, and by the way, on my Patreon, uh, if someone does ask me a question, I'm trying to respond uh, since we have a small group. I mean, it's tough when you have over 95,000 subscribers to, uh, you know, respond to everybody's comments. But on the Patreon, hopefully you guys uh, following me on Patreon are finding that I am responding to all your questions. Uh, the announcement came amid declining market share for USDC and fresh competition from our new competitors, such as big payments giant PayPal. So, yeah, as I was saying, uh, USDC uh, becoming one of those, uh, becoming one of those ones that the U.S. I think is going to 
find acceptable for use in the United States. USDT, on the other hand, or Tether, and that is a whole different ball of wax. Uh, Coinbase highlighted the fundamental importance of stable coins to the broader crypto economy. Coinbase providing Circle with some measure of support makes sense, said Mark Palmer, a digital assets and fintech research analyst at Berenberg Capital Markets. Here's a quote, guys. Interest income from USDC represents almost 23% of the company's net revenue in the second quarter, and USDC's market cap has only continued to decline, he added. Coinbase is relying upon this revenue, especially as its transaction-based revenue remains at depressed levels. So Circle's USDC, this is definitely uh, one of the ones that you will likely find on uh, you know, a lot of the exchanges that uh, they support because it is solid, it is sound. Uh, for whatever reasons they see fit. I mean, uh, I'm not digging into those reasons, at least not in this video, but uh, you know, we got to pay attention because it's going to make a difference on how we cash out, uh, what our market exit strategy is. And guys, I'm going to be getting to a lot of these concepts on my Patreon when the time comes. Uh, so anyway, this is what we're seeing. Tough times regulating the market. Uh, we have certain aspects of it being regulated-ish. USDC coin being one of those uh, stable coins that the US sees fit and many other countries too. Wanted to keep moving guys. Wrath of Kahneman posting this with regards to Ripple partner China Bank. Now, this is an old partnership with China Bank. Ripple's ODL user has partnered with Extendit for embedded banking. China Bank introduces embedded banking for effortless online payments. Guys, this just came out the other day. China Bank customers rejoice. No need to switch apps to check out anymore. Let's face it, everything we need to do, we want to do online from paying our bills to getting groceries to buying ready to eat foods. Of course, for China Bank customers, though, online transactions just got more convenient as the bank adapts embedded banking to non-bank apps and websites. And guys, they're using Extendit to do this. This was made possible by the partnership between China Bank and Extendit, who is a Ripple partner uh, in the Philippines, a leading payment infrastructure provider for enterprise startups and SMEs. China Bank entered this partnership in response to its customers' growing needs for digital payment solutions. And here's a quote, guys. China Bank's move to introduce embedded banking demonstrates its recognition of the shifting payment landscape and the customer's evolving preferences. We want to be part of our customers' everyday financial decisions and transactions, which is why we are providing them a more integrated and streamlined payment experience. China Bank's digital payment service is useful for customers who don't own or do not want to use their debit cards, credit cards, or e-wallets for online purchases. To use, customers simply need to enter their China Bank mobile banking credentials to pay directly from their account. This service is supported by multi-factor authentication to ensure secure digital transactions. And guys, they are doing this again, as I said, through Ripple Partner Extended, a leading partner in the Philippines for payment infrastructure, mainly for startups and SMEs. But it sounds as though uh, now they are extending to more types of potential partners, uh, leveraging China Bank's customers now too. So uh, Rathacon just saying, you know, it's interesting to see what develops. He also does make a note here. Extended initially used other cryptos as well. Uh, and the founder is X Ripple Engineer, and he lists all the data here. Uh, if you guys want to click on some of these links just to see the connections there. Anyway, wanted to thank the Wrath of Kahneman just for uh, bringing us that connection. Very interesting to see, uh, you know, these Ripple partners partnering up, extending the web of XRP utility. Eventually, once we do see that regulation, another one here, guys, from the Wrath of Kahneman on Twitter, Airwallex, which is another Ripple user has partnered with Yield for international payments. They're looking to help customers accelerate global payments and financial operations. So Yield is a Chicago-based fintech startup uh, founded last year by two former Stripe employees, Emily uh, Tistrian and Mira Bura. Today announced a partnership with Airwallex, a leading global payment and financial platform for modern business. Yield's mission is to help businesses of all sizes integrate or retrofit their payment acceptance technology, leveraging the team's deep knowledge of financial infrastructure to modernize and optimize systems that improve profitability. So businesses are a big uh, market for these fintechs. I mean, the user retail end, I guess it does have its applications. Yield though, what they're doing is they want to help uh, businesses, small businesses, and uh, you know, you got to think too, the nature of business, the nature of doing business has changed over the last decade or so. We're shopping more online now than we were ever before. So, you know, these businesses have that opportunity to capture a global market. So they need fintech. They need a solution where they can leverage DLT, blockchain technology, the XRP ledger, 
hopefully one day utilizing XRP. And I'm sure in some cases they're already uh, doing it in some parts of the world, maybe not in the US right this second, but in other parts of the world, leveraging XRP to transfer, find that liquidity and transfer uh, exotic currencies from one currency to another. So Yield's co-founder started the company based on their collective direct experience delivering digital payment integrations themselves. And together, uh, they do have a vision to develop world-class integration and advisory services as well as products for the world's most innovative companies. So that's just another partnership here with Ripple partner Airwallex, now connected through Yield Guys. So some more great news here. Again, wanted to thank the Wrath of Kahneman just for uh, bringing that to our attention. And the Sum Wallet guys also has some new updates. They've teamed up with GateHub. We've teamed up with the Sum Wallet. Okay, posts GateHub here on Twitter to bring you on and off ramps. Starting today, you can now easily transfer funds in and out of your Sum Wallet via GateHub. So here is the uh, the press release just stating that XRPL Labs and GateHub joined forces. And guys, they're adding 14 assets for on and off ramps here. Let me just uh, pump that up a little bit. GateHub and the XRPL Labs, uh, the makers of the Sum Wallet, two of the most active companies on the XRP Ledger, have teamed up to bring more assets to the XRP Ledger. And so get this, they're enabling seamless value transfers between the XRPL and other supported networks. Okay, so these are not just peer-to-peer uh, -peer transactions, guys. They're integrating SEPA, they're integrating SWIFT, Bitcoin, and Ethereum. Well, Bitcoin and Ethereum a little more in the uh, rugged individualism column, but SWIFT and SEPA, guys, these are mainstream banking networks. I recently just did a video on SEPA just yesterday, guys, and I'll link it up here in the top right-hand corner, the potential, and uh, this is excluding this uh, new partnership, but the potential of integrating XRP through another means. This is a significant step forward for the XRPL ecosystem. The partnership brings new capabilities and convenience to users worldwide and eases the retail adoption of cryptocurrency payments. Here's what the CEO of GitHub said. Okay, a quote here. We are excited to join forces with some and make it easy for customers to seamlessly transfer funds in and out of their XRP XRPL accounts straight from some. Any new asset that GateHub lists in the future will also be supported by our on and off ramps, bringing even more value to the XRPL ecosystem in the years to come. So value added to the XRPL ecosystem. The CEO of GateHub is even saying it. This is going to provide more opportunity, guys, for adoption for XRP, the native currency, of course, that liquidity currency, the liquid currency that's going to be transferring a lot of these transactions. Uh, the collaboration with GateHub provides some users a simple uh, on and off ramps, right? The increased adoption of XRP and other digital assets across the DeFi ecosystem and fosters interoperability uh, cross chain. So we've got a little bit of uh, just a demonstration here. Even Vitz Vin said blockchain technology has a lot to offer when it comes to making existing payment flows viable. GateHub and some joining forces will remove most of today's friction by streamlining the on off ramp process. This kicks off many of the XRPL powered retail and utility focused endeavors we envisioned years ago. So on top of XRP guys, here are the uh, the currencies currently being supported. So the Euro, USD, Great British Pound, Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Litecoin, Ethereum, Ethereum Classic, SGB, Flare. Uh, we've got USDC, so that's stablecoin as well. Uh, wrapped XRP, Gala, and Dash. So very interesting to note that uh, Dash is an interesting choice. I mean, they're a privacy coin. So don't know. Things are getting spicy, guys. Things are heating up. We're seeing more XRPL utility, more uh, reasons to be using the XRP ledger. And, uh, you know, this has been the main focus from the beginning. The big guys, the small guys, everybody is going to be using XRP at some point in time. So, uh, again, wanted to thank uh, just GateHub here, Vitz, Vin, and the Sum Wallet just for providing those updates. ISO 20022, let's do it here. Posting this. Now, yesterday I did a video about SEPA and I already uh, posted it in the top right hand corner there. Uh, I do suggest you guys watch it because they were targeting a specific date, November 2023. And so we were talking about that yesterday. Well, this happened to come across my desk today. So confirmation that Swift is also updating their message standard for November 2023. Coincidence? Hmm. This one coming from Errol Kaya, Chief Technology Officer at Buna. So uh, it looks as though this is from a, a LinkedIn post. I tried to find him on LinkedIn and I uh, had to sign in here. Here he is, Chief Technology Officer at Buna. Okay, so he's got a lot of uh, a lot of experience here. The Arab Regional Payments Clearing and Settlement Organization. So he's been there since October of 2020. Uh, Buna is a subsidiary of the Arab Monetary Fund, providing cross-border payment systems to 22 member countries in the Arab region. Buna enables financial institutions and central banks in the region and beyond to send and receive cross-border payments throughout the day at real time, serving 
as a single entry point to the region's financial system for global financial institutions, as well as a multi-currency and multi-instrument system for local ones. So definitely well-versed in the uh, cross-border payment world. Uh, so he certainly would know about Ripple. There's no Ripple connection here uh, to this guy. But what I did want to point out was this. If we go to activity, let me just uh, show all activity and some of his posts here. Uh, he did make a reference. Where was it now? Was it a post? Was it an article? No, it wasn't an article. Was it a document? Whoops. Let me go back here uh, just to see where that was. Posts, I think it was. Yeah, it was this one here. Okay, let me read this for you guys. Well, volumes of tokenized assets are expected to reach 24 trillion USD by 2027. Okay, so let's think of that for a second. Volumes of tokenized assets, guys. This is currently the crypto market in 2023. The total crypto market, all cryptocurrencies. And what did I say today? We're at about 1 trillion. He is saying that by 2027, guys, it is going to go up to 27 trillion dollars, which is right in around here, up 2,500%. And that is all tokenized assets. So this is really going to skyrocket. The financial messaging standards adoption to serve the digital assets is encouraging as SWIFT is updating the message standard by November 2023. So guys, SEPA is doing this by 2023 and SWIFT is expected to also be doing this by 2023 to align with the digital token identifier standard or the ISO 24165 for securities transactions specifically. Hmm, so that Ripple ISDA partnership looking a lot more interesting now. And moving towards November 2023, who knows what could happen? Fix has done it earlier this year. Interoperability between real world and digital assets, or in other words, between RTGS and CBDC networks from a settlement point of view would be more convenient. He hashtags here ISO 2022, digital assets, cryptocurrency, uh, fix CBD community or CBDC community, uh, even uh, hashtag Swift here, and of course, cross-border payments. Well, we know the number one cryptocurrency company that is going to be tokenizing assets globally. I'm not talking about on a small scale, guys. I'm talking about globally $27 trillion in tokenized assets. Now, it's not all going to be on the XRP ledger, but what would you bet even 50% would be? Okay, even let's say 40% or 25%. Running through Ripple on the XRP ledger, 25% of 27 trillion is $6.75 trillion, guys. I mean, the current market cap is only $1 trillion. You could only imagine how much utility we're going to be needing on the XRP ledger, how much demand there's going to be for XRP, and what this price is going to be by 2027. And it's all starting November 2023. SEPA is doing it. And now it's been confirmed that SWIFT is also integrating by November 2023. That's just my opinion, but I want to hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.